Iraq is increasingly turning its attention to unconventional solutions as it confronts one of the most severe water shortages in its modern history. Across large parts of the country, rivers have receded, reservoirs have dropped to worrying levels and farmland that once supported entire communities now struggles to sustain crops. With traditional sources of water under pressure from climate change, regional dynamics and years of environmental stress, Iraqi authorities are exploring cloud seeding as a potential way to ease the growing crisis. The move reflects a sense of urgency within government institutions tasked with safeguarding the country's water resources. Officials acknowledge that Iraq's water challenges are no longer temporary disruptions, but structural problems that require long-term planning and scientific intervention. Rainfall patterns have become increasingly erratic, summers hotter and longer, and droughts more frequent. These changes have placed immense strain on water systems that were designed for a very different climate reality. Against this backdrop, the Ministry of Water Resources has begun formally reviewing cloud seeding experiments as part of its broader response to water scarcity. The idea is not entirely new, but it has gained renewed attention as officials search for every viable option to protect water availability for agriculture, drinking supplies and ecosystems. In an official statement, the Ministry confirmed that Hatem Hamid, Director of the Planning Department, met with cloud seeding specialists to discuss possible collaboration in adopting this technique to enhance water supplies in drought-affected areas. The meeting marked a shift from theoretical discussion toward more practical consideration of how the technique might be applied in Iraq's specific environmental conditions. During the discussion, specialists and planners examined how cloud seeding could be integrated into existing water management strategies. Rather than treating it as a standalone solution, officials emphasized that any potential use would complement other measures such as improved water conservation, better irrigation practices and long-term climate adaptation planning. The focus of the meeting was highly technical. Experts discussed how to identify suitable clouds, particularly those with sufficient water vapour that could respond effectively to seeding. Officials explained that cloud seeding only works when atmospheric conditions are already favourable, meaning it cannot create rain out of clear skies or dry air. This limitation was acknowledged openly, underscoring the cautious approach being taken. As described in the Ministry's briefing, the meeting addressed strategies to increase rainfall by selecting appropriate clouds with enough water vapour to create ice crystals or water droplets to increase water resources. This emphasis on careful selection reflects an understanding that poorly executed seeding efforts could yield minimal results or waste valuable resources. Cloud seeding, while often portrayed as dramatic or futuristic, is in fact a method that has been used for decades in various parts of the world. It typically involves dispersing particles, such as silver iodide, into clouds using aircraft or ground-based generators. These particles encourage the formation of ice crystals or droplets, which can grow large enough to fall as rain. For Iraq, the appeal of cloud seeding lies in its potential to slightly boost rainfall during critical periods. Even modest increases could help recharge reservoirs, support crops and reduce pressure on already depleted rivers. Officials believe that in a country where every drop of water matters, incremental gains could still have meaningful impacts. The government's interest in cloud seeding comes at a time when water scarcity is affecting nearly every sector of Iraqi society. Farmers in central and southern provinces have been forced to reduce planted areas or abandon certain crops altogether. Rural communities report wells running dry earlier each year, while urban residents face intermittent supply disruptions during peak summer months. Environmental experts warn that the situation could worsen if current trends continue. Rising temperatures increase evaporation rates, meaning that even when rain does fall, less water remains available for long-term use. At the same time, upstream water management practices beyond Iraq's borders have reduced the flow of major rivers, compounding domestic challenges. 
Recognising the scale of the problem, Iraq's parliament has also begun to engage more directly with scientific and technical solutions. In August, the Parliamentary Committee on Agriculture, Water and Marshlands initiated steps to form a specialised technical team within the Prime Minister's office. The goal of this team is to study the experiences of other countries that have implemented cloud seeding and to assess whether similar approaches could be realistically adapted for Iraq. According to officials familiar with the process, the team is expected to analyse data from international case studies, examine cost-benefit scenarios and evaluate potential environmental risks. This effort reflects a broader desire to base policy decisions on evidence rather than speculation, particularly when dealing with a resource as sensitive and essential as water. Supporters of cloud seeding argue that it represents a proactive response to climate stress, signalling that Iraq is willing to embrace innovation rather than relying solely on traditional infrastructure. They point out that climate change has altered weather patterns so dramatically that old assumptions about rainfall and river flow no longer hold true. However, even proponents are careful to stress that cloud seeding is not a miracle cure. Its effectiveness varies widely depending on weather conditions conditions and its results can be difficult to measure precisely. In some cases, rainfall increases may be modest or localised, making it challenging to assess whether improvements are directly attributable to seeding efforts. Despite these uncertainties, officials believe the potential benefits justify further exploration. The ministry has framed cloud seeding as one tool among many, rather than a replacement for comprehensive water reform. Investments in dam maintenance, irrigation, modernisation and water conservation are expected to continue alongside any experimental weather modification programmes. The broader context of Iraq's water crisis adds weight to these discussions. Years of conflict and underinvestment have left water infrastructure in fragile condition, leaking canals, outdated irrigation systems and limited wastewater treatment capacity all contribute to inefficiencies that magnify the impact of drought. Climate change has intensified these structural weaknesses. Heat waves arrive earlier and last longer, while rainfall seasons have become shorter and less predictable. Marshlands in the south, once a vital ecological and cultural landscape, have shrunk dramatically, threatening biodiversity and traditional livelihoods. Public concern over water security has grown accordingly. Farmers, environmental advocates and local officials have increasingly called on the central government to prioritise water management as a national security issue. In this context, cloud seeding has emerged as a symbol of the government's willingness to explore unconventional measures in response to extraordinary circumstances. The science behind cloud seeding continues to evolve and Iraqi officials are aware that any implementation would require strong technical oversight. Meteorological monitoring systems would need to be improved to accurately identify suitable cloud conditions. Aircraft or ground-based seeding equipment would need to be acquired or adapted and personnel trained to operate them safely and effectively. Environmental considerations are also part of the discussion. While silver iodide is widely used in cloud seeding and generally considered safe in the small quantities involved, authorities have emphasised the need for careful environmental assessments to ensure that seeding operations do not create unintended consequences. At the same time, the government is mindful of public perception. Weather modification techniques often attract scepticism or misunderstanding and officials have indicated that public communication will be important if cloud seeding moves beyond the experimental stage. Transparency about objectives, methods and limitations is seen as essential to maintaining public trust. For many Iraqis, the debate over cloud seeding reflects deeper anxieties about the future. Water has always been central to the country's identity, economy and survival. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers are woven into history, culture and daily life. The idea that rainfall itself may need to be artificially enhanced underscores how dramatically conditions have changed. As Iraq weighs its options, cloud seeding remains under review rather than fully adopted. 
Officials continue to gather data, consult experts and examine experiences elsewhere. The outcome of these deliberations will likely depend on technical feasibility, cost considerations and the broader trajectory of Iraq's climate and water challenges. What is clear is that the country can no longer afford to ignore the warning signs. Drought, once considered an occasional hardship, has become a recurring reality. Whether through cloud seeding, infrastructure reform, diplomatic engagement over shared rivers or a combination of all three, Iraq's response to water scarcity will shape its stability and development for years to come. In this sense, the discussions taking place within government offices and technical committees are about more than rainfall. They are about resilience, adaptation and the difficult choices facing a nation trying to secure its most fundamental resource in an era of profound environmental change.